Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. It's a pleasure to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio. And here in this particular segment of Points of Light Radio, we're going to be continuing our journey in search of light and knowledge by, like I said, continuing with, continuing with the journey, but also having a bit of fun at the same time. And the reason I say that is we're going to be featuring an organization that you've probably never heard of but that's there to support entertainers. And we'll be fellowshipping with a gentleman named Mike Martin. He's the secretary to the Grand Order of Water Rats Trustees in the United Kingdom. But just to give you some background on this organization, the Grand Order of Water Rats is a British entertainment industry fraternity and charitable organization based in London, England. It was founded in 1889 by the music hall comedians Joe Elvin and Jack Lotto. The order is known for its high profile membership and benevolent works, primarily within the performing industries. Their headquarters is at the Grand, the, sorry, the Water Rats Pub, Gray's Inn Road in King's Cross, London. And their motto is social intercourse hello <laughs> right uh with on that note uh how about we we let my guest uh shed a little further light on this shall we uh let's go have mr martin shed some light on the grand order of water rats and this should be a lot of fun but as i always ask you Are you still thirsty for knowledge? Are you still searching for the light? Then you just trim your lamp and follow me. Ah. Mr. Martin, welcome to Points of Light Radio. Good morning, Stan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Good. Good morning. Yeah, you are the secretary of the Grand Order of Water Rats Trustees. That's it, yes, yes. Why don't you tell my listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself? About myself or about the order yeah. in general? Or so How long have you been in the order for, for, for a start? Um, it's uh, 29 years now. Um, uh, following my, my father and my uncle were both in the order as well. Okay. And, my, and my brother is in it as well, so it's quite a family concern. <laughs> <laughs> well, and... What are your duties as the Grand Order of Water Rats trustee? We are um, essentially a show business brotherhood. Um, uh, It's an all-male society uh, founded in 1889 by a group of music hall artists at the time. Initially, it was just a a brotherhood uh, for a a place to gather for um, artists to talk about Um, their mutual interests in entertainment but it expanded for various complicated reasons and became a charity so we are a registered charity and ever since 1889 apart from the social side of the order uh, we we do raise a lot of money for charity by putting on shows and various events and things the original idea being to help um, struggling uh, fellow musical artists like um, you know, a juggler who'd broken his arm or something, or a dancer broken his leg or whatever, you know, um, singers with voice problems, you know, anybody who who was uh, in hard times um, who was in the business. That was what it was founded for, to, to, to help other struggling artists. So that's essentially what it's about to this day. So uh, mem- membership is still uh, male members of the entertainment profession. Okay. Um, um, you have a ladies' auxiliary well, thing, don't you? 
Well, we do. Um, uh, that was founded in the late 1920s. Whoa, okay. Uh, I didn't know that. Because um, uh, essentially what it was, was uh, the, the lodge meetings were on a Sunday because that was the only day off in Variety Theatre in those days. So that was the day they all the men used to meet. And apparently all the wives and partners got a bit sick of that. So they founded their own um, society, a kind of a, a, a sister branch of the order. I mean, we don't have lodges together or anything like that. They're totally oh. separate. They founded the Grand Order of Lady Rattlings. And okay. that, was all, that was all the wives. Uh, but that expanded over the years. And it, that now is... Um, not just the wives and partners of water rats, but also any uh, any lady performers. Um, you know, they, they, they've got uh, they've got their royal companions and things like Princess Anne, and uh, uh, as we have got royal companions too, uh, although not many now because uh, we've recently lost the Duke of Edinburgh, of course, which was he he was a, a keen water rat, um, okay. but his son Charles. He's a member, but obviously we don't yeah. <laughs> see him now. I'll see a whole lot yeah, of him being, being the king. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, but do uh, you help set up, for instance, is there, are you helping set up, for instance, a pension system or something as well for some of the retired performers or anything like that? If they really need it, we do have a few uh, on, on pensions. Okay. Uh, we're not we're not a soft touch or anything you know you no, uh, no. people people do try it on but our, our first remit is uh, basically to help our members and their dependents so we do help a lot of the widows of water rats if they're if they on hard times and some of them are on on pensions if they really need it um and, and the same with with some of our elderly members who uh, who, who may be struggling now yeah. So, uh, but as I say, it's not just members. We're we're open to basically uh, any full-time, long-standing, uh, fully professional members of the entertainment profession. Yeah. So, what are the so the the qualifications to join? You have to be a performer of some kind, or yes, yes. Okay. You have to be um, sort of well known within the business. Um, we have got a lot of. Um, of famous members and have had in the past, but um, most of us aren't famous. But we are, <laughs> no, but we are known within the profession. You've got, you've got yeah. to have the respect of your peers. So to become a member, uh, you do need to find a proposer and a seconder who, who are members of the order. And then there's a long, complicated process of it going through the the grand council when it goes out to the vote. And um, you know, if there if there are any objections. If, if they're strong enough, that that will keep somebody out. So, Have you so, ever saw that? Oh, many times. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. just interested. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's um, because we're we're um we're we're always less than two hundred. It's never been more than two hundred uh, uh, members of the Grand Order of Water Rats, and um, I think our membership stands at about one hundred and sixty at the moment. Because we we've lost a lot in uh, in recent years. Actually, it's um, quite frightening. I spend so much time at funerals, Stan. It's uh, oh yeah, well, try, I try. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I tell you, the older you get, right, more funerals, well, weddings. Quite, <laughs> quite, but you know, we are we are getting a, a lot of uh, young members in now, which okay. which is good. Um, we're not. Um, a lot of people think we're actually affiliated with with Freemasonry, but we're not. I mean, a lot of us are Freemasons. I mean, I am one myself with Chelsea Lodge in London. But um, although we wear collars and things, yeah, you know, I, was say, I in, saw that. Yeah, in Masonic style, but um, but we're not we're not actually um, affiliated to Freemasonry. A lot of people think we're another branch of it, but no, it's a completely separate thing. It's um, we do have ritual, but minimal. Uh, minimal ritual and our lodge meetings are mainly just about fun <laughs> it's a place for uh, uh artists uh, to get together and talk about show business which is uh, you know one of the only places you can do that these days on mass so uh so yeah it's uh, basically lodge meetings are about fun and fellowship well i was going to ask you though here 
The Grand Order of Water Rats charitable, charitable Fund represents unselfish giving to those less fortunate than themselves, providing a stream of support, and then just paraphrasing here, um, whilst embracing benevolence of our members, families, and our show business colleagues. It also retains the power to make special awards to worthy individuals or organizations. So what are some charities that you support? It's not so much that we'll support other charities because charities tend to have their own fundraising. I mean, we all have to raise funds, but we will do things like, um, uh, for instance, recently, uh, St. Thomas's Hospital, their, um, their children's hospital branch, uh, the Evelina Children's Hospital, they wanted to um, create an actual music therapy department within the hospital. So we find I stole of that, for instance, because uh, we do support things that are particularly, um, not exclusively, but we do particularly go for causes um, that are entertainment related. So obviously the idea of, of sick children um, having music therapy it was obviously very much in our ballpark. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, so we set that up, for instance. You know, we buy equipment for hospitals. Um, we, we've, it, we, you know, it's it's not just a case of helping individuals. We do consider bigger um, projects, um, particularly if they're related to what we're about. On the but it sounds to me too, though, like your charity also starts your good work start in house, as it should in any type of organizations like this looking after brothers and so their brothers and yeah so yeah but yeah as i say that's the uh, that's the first the first remit but um i mean my position I, I mean we have offices within the order obviously we have a king rat you know every year he's kind of in charge um and then you'll have a prince rat you'll have a preceptor who's the kind of father of the order then you go down all the different offices a musical rat who will play the keyboards during lodge meetings um uh, we have a collecting rat who collects all the money that comes in um I, i'm actually the scribe rat so i keep yeah. the minutes and things but also my other function is as you said at the beginning uh secretary to the trustees mm -hmm. so we have five trustees and um basically all of the charity requests uh go to them so I'm the kind of stepping stone. They come to me first and I have to filter them knowing what our remit is. And I put them to the trustees and they make the decisions about where the, where the money goes. Okay. Yeah. So, so secretary, the trustees is a separate position to my office within the order. Um, so you talk about special awards though. Uh, what sorts of special awards do the grand order of water rats give out? Right. Well, uh, we, we have several different ones, really. Um, the, uh, for instance, we have an we have an annual ball, um, although we haven't been able to have one for the last three years. We're actually going back to it now. Good. <laughs> Obviously, due to the world situation, which messed everything up. Um, but at that, it's a big show business event where we have a lot of uh, well-known celebrities and things. It's the biggest fundraiser of the year, and at that, for instance. We will give our show business personality of the year award to that doesn't have to be a water app that's whoever you know is deemed um you know d worthy of having the award that year so every year we do that that's a big thing around the ball uh <clears throat> we also have something excuse me sir oh. called the serge ganju award and uh serge ganju um was one of our very significant members many years ago uh he was a member of the ganju brothers and they were like um a, a variety speciality act they used to dress in regency costume three brothers <laughs> and then they would have juanita with them and basically they'd throw her all around the stage these three guys it was quite an act you, you they're, they're still available you can see them on youtube it was all kind of through the 1920s 30s 40s to an extent and and serge was the last survivor water at they were all water at and um uh, I remember when I first uh, joined the order, Serge uh, was still around in his late nineties, <laughs> strong as an ox. You know, he was a uh, he'd been driven out of Russia in the pogroms by the Cossacks and things. What a life he had! And um, uh, he, when he left show business, um, he became very rich through property speculation and restaurants. So he actually left a lot of money. 
And bless his heart, a lot of it he left to the water rats uh, on the condition that we set up the Serge Ganja Award. And uh, that is an award that we give most years, if we can find the right person, to, uh, at Serge's wishes, a young artist who will need support. So uh, that's one of the main awards we would give each year, most years, the Serge Gancho Award to, to set up a young artist and help them with their career. Uh, we also um, are very selective about um, certain students. We, we, we uh, you know, they have to be somebody who's particularly impressed us, who looks particularly promising, and we will help them with their um, uh, tuition fees to get them through um, drama school or whatever. Um, but, you know, it has to be somebody special. We, we do get a lot of requests like that, as I'm sure you can imagine. I mean, uh, struggling young performers, they do need to find the money um, to get through their education. Um, and uh, we can't help them all, obviously. So, but some we do, if they're particular, if we feel they're particularly special. Where we had um, a young uh, ballet dancer um, who went to study with the Bol Bolshoi Ballet, and she was particularly, wow. um, and and she graduated, and she's um, she's a, a, a full time, fully professional ballet dancer now, and she impressed us because she was she was so dedicated and so talented. So uh, you know, if she becomes the next Margot Fontaine, <laughs> she might um, she might have some nice things to say about us. Bless her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, that sounds interesting, actually. But uh, your headquarters is at the Water Rats Pub at the Gray's Inn Road in King's Cross, London. Yep, that's you right. Have chapters elsewhere, shall we say, or anything like that around the UK or around the rest of the world? No, no, not at all. We we do we have international members, obviously, but um, essentially that's that's our headquarters. It's. Um, it's a big pub. It's a big show business pub in the Gray's Inn Road near King's Cross Station. So right in the centre of London. We've been there since 1986. Uh, before that, we were based at a place called the Eccentric Club in Mayfair, London. Mm -hmm. uh, the lease ran out on that. So for the first time in the history of the order, we actually purchased our own property, thanks to a lot of donations and support that we had from uh, various wealthy people and very grateful we are to them uh, so we actually own this uh, it's a big pub very historic pub it used to be called the pindar of wakefield okay. and it housed what was known at, uh, and karl marx had lodged there um, it was the uh, place where bob dylan did his first ever london gig oh no way yeah in fact he did it it was a folk club in those days uh, long before the water rats owned it and um he we've got a lovely historic picture of him which we've got on the wall of him playing at this folk club um, and and it's actually our lodge room and the, and the corner is still the same you can still recognize it it's where our musical rat sits and we've got this lovely picture of bob dylan there uh with his guitar with um, all the folkies of the time all sitting around him it's uh it's lovely. Um, and, and also, it, it became a very famous, and still is to this day, a rock music pub. It's got a big reputation in the country, uh, and a lot of very big artists started there. Katy Perry did her first London gig there. Oasis did their first Southern gig there. Uh, bands, um, uh, 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 who, who else we had? Oh, I'm having a senior moment. I'll think in a minute. But anyway, a, a lot of famous artists have, have uh, appeared downstairs in the pub and uh, big rock music venue. Uh, uh, the pub is run separately. We own it, but we get a, a nice um, income from the manager of, of the pub because it's a very busy pub. So that really helps with our, uh, our finances. Our lodge room and offices and museum, they're all on the second, third and fourth floor above the pub. So it's nice to have our own property uh, now. And you right. see that, like, you said, some good, some good acts coming through. Like, do you ever get any of like the famous acts, contemporary coming through, play a set there once in a while for you? Oh yeah, sure, sure. Oh, it's it's beautiful. It a lot. We've got. Um, I, I don't know if you'd be aware of, of some of these names. I, th I think they're going international. Are you aware of um, Rag and Bone Man, for instance? He's, okay. he's 
yeah, he's um, he's agreed to do a gig there uh, yeah. because his father is um, an ambitious musician, bless his heart, and, uh, <laughs> and one of our one of our members is uh, giving him guitar lessons. So we made a connection there, yeah. and uh, and his rag and bow man's dad at, um actually asked his son uh would he would he come and, and play at the pub because you, you do get uh, uh, i say it, it, it's strange um uh, well it's great really katie perry for instance about three years ago she was playing the o2 in london obviously huge venue with thousands of people but she remembered the uh the water rats pub when she was completely unknown when she was over here and she did uh apparently her first or certainly one of her very first london gigs completely unknown at the water rats pub yeah and, um, and she said to her management that she'd love to come back and do a gig at the water rats pub for old time's sake so there it was you know we um uh, we, our maximum capacity in, in the pub concert room is about 150 so there was katie perry came and did this gig for 150 people and um and, and the queues to get into the place were like right down grazing road uh, she brought 25 security people with her <laughs> <laughs> well you know it sounds to me though like this pub like you lost your last place where you used to meet but you're already establishing a great history in this new place you're meeting and that's beautiful it's a, a, a fun and entertainment and yeah it is lovely it's lovely it's great it really is very very historic building i mean it's um i think it dates from the early 1800s but as i said uh, karl marx lodged there for a while you know things <laughs> like that, you know so it's an amazing history and um uh, over the years, I mean, we've had some uh, very famous people in our lodge room being initiated. I mean, Bob Hope was a water rat. Um, yeah. He was he was initiated in in the lodge. Well, they all are, obviously. And uh, uh, he was uh, new rats are always called baby rats. And Bob Hope was the baby rat when he was ninety two. <laughs> ah, there's nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Right. Never too young. Never too old. Never. Never. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, quite, quite right. Now you yeah. mentioned your regalia that you wear to your meetings. Yeah. What other things would you have? Like, do you have a degree system within your uh, with within the water rats? No, no, um, not in that sense. Not in a Masonic sense. No, you don't go through degrees. It, it's purely um, uh, voted by the members. You know, you don't have to go through every office to reach King Rat. Um, I mean, a lot do, obviously, yeah. but um, some uh, have never held an office. They're still water rats, but through whatever reason, they ended up they end up getting voted in as king rat by the other members. Um, uh, the the first office you take would be something called, um, if you were going through the system, although you don't have to, uh, would be bait rat. Which is, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's basically that's to do with um looking after all the food and Perfect. the drink you know and um and uh and the raffle who always have a fun raffle at lunch meetings um uh, it's called a bait rat because uh one of our strange rules and i don't think i'm giving any secrets away here is uh we're, we're not allowed to mention food or drink in lodge it has to be wet bait or dry bait <laughs> you're not allowed to mention money uh, if you do you're fined um, you 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 have to call it coins you know so there's all sorts of ways of catching people out to to earn it's all a fun thing you know but it's all yeah. about money raising you know and um and you see you know we all have to wear this emblem it's the um gold water emblem yeah and if you're caught anywhere not wearing that by another member you're allowed to fine him oh. so, so we raise a lot of money like that so you always try and make sure you've always got this on <laughs> especially if you're in public <laughs> well, how long are your meetings by the way you mentioned these meetings how long are they uh, as a rule um you know it depends what's going on you know um uh, uh, anything between two to three hours really Whoa. Uh, yeah okay yeah so and then we uh, we all go into the uh, conference room afterwards or downstairs into the pub um and they'll, they'll close the pub off so that we can have the pub for our social side of it afterwards we'll have a meal we 
quite often put on entertainment and things. Um, oh, why often so, you hold meetings? Uh, they used to be every fortnight, but they're monthly now. We found that it, it they tend to be better attended if we now that we've made them monthly. Yeah, you create, you make them an event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But also, we have you know a lot of other events as well. I mentioned the uh, the ball. That's our biggest one of the year. Um, uh, and uh, but we'll we'll have other things as well. We um, we'll have house dinners. Um, we'll have various tribute lunches to long-standing members. Um, uh, fundraising shows. Any excuse, really, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, as I say, it's essentially about um, sociability. What are the dues? For- dues, um, it's, uh, there is a, a, mem- um, a joining fee um, of £500, and then it's £200 a year. Okay. And, uh, uh, but um, obviously, when, if you're a very long-standing member or if you pass the age of 80, um they wa- they they waived the dues over the age of eighty, but a lot of, a lot of members to carry on paying even mm-hmm. e- even though they don't have to, which which is nice. Yeah. But you know, I understand like Grand Order of Water Rats was in your family, but what yeah. was your what was your what, you were must have been a performer of some kind, were you? I still am, yeah, very yeah. much so. Yeah, I mean, your my, well, uh, me Artist. personally, I'm a, a musician and um, uh, played several different instruments and singer. And uh, I, I was part of a, um, a comedy show band for years. It was like, um, uh, you know, lots of costume changes, lots of funny yeah. instruments. You know, we used to play a toilet, get a tune out of the <laughs> toilet and things like that. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of comedy sketches and things. I was with them for 20 years, but I've been in all kinds of acts, you know, and still am. Um, got, got a musical show on the road at the moment uh, with me and two friends, one of whom is a water rat and the other one hopefully is going to be. Um, and uh, it's called Walk On Back To Happiness, which is a kind of a tribute show to the 50s and 60s with a, a lot of <laughs> involved um and uh also i mean i work solo i work with various bands and things you know uh, uh, in all kinds of genres um so that that's me i mean my father who as i said was a water he, he was actually quite a famous name in the 1950s he had his own tv series and things his name was george martin the, the casual comedian and uh, he went on to become um, quite a prolific tv script writer as well and his brother, my uncle Bill, he was a comedian too, uh, but not as famous as my dad was at the time. But my uncle Bill, he went on to become scribe rat, and of course that's my position now. So, <laughs> and I've been scribe rat for God twenty twenty four years now. If if I've ju- in fact I've just got the record. Um, <laughs> I, I'm the longest standing scribe rat now. Before me, it was a guy called Ern Chester. <laughs> uh, back in the 20s and 30s and i've just beaten him i've, I've just got one year longer than him now <laughs> so uh, i'll hang on to that yeah uh, and my brother as i say he's in the order as well he's he's a musician and writer and performer so yeah we've um, well, the arts really runs in your family yeah yeah i'd um i, I mean I've, I've got two sons one of them he's 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 not professional in the business but he's a very good guitar player and he's got a band and uh yeah so it's uh just does seem to be in the genes i'm pleased to say yeah well, that's wonderful that's wonderful to hear but you know i always ask this what do you feel that the grand order of water rats has done for you what do you feel that you've accomplished? like what is your greatest accomplishment in it, shall we say well I, i'm i'm very proud uh very proud to be a member um it's um it, it's a fraternity of like-minded people. Uh, um, we, you, you know, it's I've made I've made so many close good friends throughout my time in the order. So essentially, it is uh, about philanthropy, conviviality, and social intercourse. That's the that's the motto of the order, and uh, and I, I feel that most of us do get that from it you know it's a it is a unique feeling when you're in that lodge room because as i said at the beginning of this you know we um there's not really 
um, anywhere where you can, um, where performers can gather in in that way, um, you know, on mass, you know, on average, we'd have say between thirty and forty at your average lodge meeting, and um, and you you know you can you close those doors and you you really do drink in the atmosphere of show business and and like mindedness, and so I've got a lot from it in that way. Mo most of us do, and. Um, you know, you, you feel you belong to something quite quite special. Well, Mr. Martin, I appreciate your time today, and you have a, you enjoy the rest of your day, and all the best to you and the Grand Order of Water Rats, sir. Well, thank you, Stan. Thanks for your interest. Uh, um, yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks thank for having us. There you have it, brothers and sisters. Mike Martin. Now, wasn't that... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun. I love featuring organizations like that. I really do. That was so much fun, you know. And you know, you. I, I, I. It's also great that you have an organization like that that's out there for the entertainer, right? The entertainer. It's amazing how these things started up. Like the Odd Fellows started up as kind of people who weren't in any way connected to masonry and you here you have something just for entertainers right i mean entertainers I, I remember many years ago i don't usually talk about this but many years ago i tried to get into acting and one of the things i learned going into it that the big name actors and actresses that you see in hollywood are are less than 5% of all working actors. And it's the same, I'm sure, with entertainers of any kind, be they comedians, be they musicians, what or whatnot. They the ones that you see, the headliners, the you know, the big rock and roll groups and so on, those are a small percentage, probably less than 5% of all musicians and comedians are the ones that you see on stage. Or television, right? right? And it's wonderful to see that an organization like the Grand Order of Water Rats, right, is there for them, right? It can be very hard to get your career off the ground, and, and retirement can be very hard for most working entertainers, right? So, in, like I said, here you have an organization that's there just for them, that knows the struggles that they have are having and will have, right? It's great, right? And some th some other things I took away from this particular interview were, it's interesting how the Grand Order of Water Rats ran in Mr. Martin's family, right? I One of the questions I asked when I started Points of Light Radio was, how do people get into this? Why did they get, what draws them into it? Well, here you have it. it. It runs in his family, along with the arts, right? Fraternalism is in his family, right? And, you know, you have, the, you know, it's great to see that the Grand Order of Water Rats is not only alive, it's, it's still attracting new members. I mean, the struggles are going to be there, but they're still attracting new members. Right. And and when it comes to membership, it's interesting here again. I've talked about this before. In points of light radio, it's interesting. We have another uh, I've, I've fellowship with another gentleman who's a member of other organizations of, of two different organizations here. Right. The uh, Freemasonry, as well as the Grand Order of Water Rats. Right. It, it, it's, you know. I've talked about that before, how people belong to different fraternal organizations and how he, he really sees them as, as equal in value. I love that as well because, and it is true, um, you know, these are standalone organizations that, that really are doing, out there doing great work just like any other fraternal organization out there, right? And it's also interesting that his Masonic Lodge is an entertainer's lodge. That's something I'm going to have to look into because I'm also seeing there are 
different lodges for members of the military as well as uh, police and so on. So I, I'm, that's something I'm going to have to go look into as well. We're going to have to uh, a feature segment of Points of Light Radio, right? Um, but, you know, the one thing he mentioned, and I, I saw this just before I went into this interview, that there is the Grand Order of Lady Rattling. So if you're in that organization, reach out to me because I want to feature you as well. Right. And I, I love I love featuring these different organizations that most people have never heard about. And they're out there doing great work. We got to raise their profile. We really do. And that's what we're doing here on Points of Light Radio. But that is all I have time for today, because it's actually very early in the morning here to, to get in touch with him. I, I stayed up till one o'clock. So I'm <laughs> but I'm before I go, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. You can see the link to the Grand Order of Water Rats website here in the details section of this segment. You can also see the link to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel as well as my Points of Light Radio store where you can get some points of light merchandise as well as some other fraternal merchandise. But brothers and sisters, it's been a pleasure fellowshipping with you and bringing this to you. But until we meet again, just step into the light.